With regard to the current health care system, here's where we are today. According to a West Health Gallup poll published in March 2022, an estimated 112 million, which is 44% of Americans, American adults, are struggling to pay for health care. And more than double that number, 93% feel that what they do pay is not worth the cost. 93%. 44% are struggling to pay for health care, barely being able to pay for it. Then 93%, basically everybody doesn't, we're paying for this shit. We don't get nothing for it. The report tells us Americans are finding it increasingly harder to pay for health care. Over the past year, wasn't it? We have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, a right to life. Well, that includes health care now, doesn't it? Americans are finding it increasingly harder to pay for health care over the past year. The percentage of Americans who report skipping needed care due to cost has increased to 30%. Meanwhile, nearly the same percentage of Americans, 29%, report that they could not access affordable care if they needed it today. But a lack of affordability is not the only issue affecting Americans' experiences with the health care system. They are also dissatisfied with its value. More than half of the country, 52%. Reports that the care provided is simply not worth the cost. <laughs> we pay all this fucking money and we just get a band-aid. We have all the millions of dollars and all we get is a goddamn morphine shot to shut the fuck up. And in an open-ended question, 38% of respondents representing an estimated 97 million adults used the word expensive to characterize the healthcare system. While another 13% used the word broken the second most used word. In America, we spend almost twice as much per capita on health care as the people of any other country. Over $12,000, 530 every year. Each year for every man, woman, and child. A total of $4 trillion. Or about 20% of our GDP. This is an astronomical expenditure. And it continues to rapidly increase and devour the resources of individuals, families, businesses, and government at an unsustainable rate. In comparison, the United Kingdom spends just $5,000, $5,268 per capita on health care. We spend $12,530. They spend $5,000. In the UK, Canada spends $5,370 per capita. France Spends 5,564. Germany spends 6,731. So we spend more than twice per capita and don't get any fucking goddamn health care. A lot of you motherfuckers have health care. Is it nice? You like the fucking government health? You like that Medicare and Medicaid, huh? You like them? You like that food stamps? You like that Social Security? I bet you them social security motherfuckers who call themselves conservative. Motherfuckers are the biggest socialists out here. They get a UBI check. Oh, you paid into it. That's not how it works, you piece of shit. It's government. The working class, it's an old age pension. It's a pension for disabled people. Working comp. Workman's compensation. An old age, when you turn 67, all you have to do is work, what, five years, ten years? Jesus Christ, I was ready to collect when I was fucking 28. Or 23. Well, I paid into it. <laughs> what? And my God, if that's... All right. At a fraction of the amount we spend... Am I even going to have Social Security? With... All these countries guarantee health care to all their people. One might think that with this huge outlay of money, the quality of health care in the United States would be... The very best in the world. Wrong. Very, very wrong. During the last years of his life, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King spoke with an increase in passion about how the struggle for civil rights had evolved into a class struggle. Speaking in 1967 to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in Atlanta, the Nobel Peace Prize recipient said, Capitalism forgets that life is social. And the kingdom of brotherhood is found neither in the thesis of communism nor the antithesis of capitalism, but in a higher synthesis. To achieve that higher synthesis, Dr. King explained, 
One day we must ask the question, why are there 40 million poor people in America? And when you begin to ask that question, you're raising questions about the economic system, about a broader distribution of wealth. When you ask that question, why are there 40 million poor people in America? You begin to question the capitalistic economy. And I'm simply saying that more and more. We've got to begin to ask questions about the whole society. And that's what this book does. Oh, shit. That's in the introduction. Page 124 is what I read earlier. That was page 15. And last but not least, you got Marianne Williamson talking about an economic bill of rights. You know, give me the peace department. Give me the economic bill of rights. And, you know, the other stuff she's talking about. Maybe we'll get it, maybe not. But uh, those two big things, a peace department, a peace department. Talk about making the war machine act right. Okay, you could be a war machine, but uh, the whole point is peace, right? No, the end goal is peace. That's the whole fucking point, right? We also lived, we've also, we have also lived throughout our history with the profound separation between political rights and economic rights. Yes, our Constitution and Bill of Rights guarantees us the right to vote, the right to express our opinions, the right to practice our religious beliefs, the right to assemble, and many other important political rights, but they don't guarantee us the right to a decent job. Health care, education, food and shelter. They do not guarantee us the right to the basic necessities that allow human beings to live decent and secure lives. Let's go back to that founding document, the Declaration of Independence. It said that all men are created equal. It's self-evident that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's self-evident. We have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So in order to guarantee life, well, that means that me that's a right to water. That's a right to food. That's a right to housing. That's a right to all the basic things that you need in order to guarantee life. A right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Your civil liberties don't mean shit. Your civil liberties don't mean shit if you don't protect life. Life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As long as your life is protected, your freedoms are protected, then it is up to you to pursue your own happiness. But we haven't even guaranteed the right to life, let alone the right to free speech or free press or free worship. So the Economic Bill of Rights, not only is it a great fucking idea, but we have, you know, like 50 rights from America and then each state has more freedoms. So as a Colorado American, I have over a hundred freedoms, not just the four or five here. I have over a hundred freedoms, but life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. You got to have a right to life, right to a decent job, right to health care, right to education, right to food and shelter. They do not guarantee us the right to the basic necessities that allow human being, beings to live and to live decently and secure lives. 1944 in a largely overlooked State of the Union address, Franklin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt spoke about this contradiction. This republic had its beginning and grew to its present strength under the protection of certain inalienable political rights, among them the right of free speech, free press, free worship, trial by jury, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures. They were our rights to life and liberty. FDR explained, as our nation has grown in size and stature, however, as our industrial economy expanded, these political rights proved inadequate to assure us equality in the pursuit of happiness. We have come to a clear realiz realization of the fact that true individual freedom cannot exist without economic security and independence. So vote for Marianne Williamson. <laughs>